Hey there, Dr. Ray here once again with the Learning Liaisons and welcome to step number two of the seven steps to success on your teacher or leader certification exam. In this step, we're gonna talk about knowledge, right? So go ahead and like, subscribe, comment to this video. Let us know what you think at the end. Share this with your teacher friends. We're all in this together. So stay tuned, coming up right now, we're gonna talk about step number two, knowledge. Right now we are in step number two of the seven steps to success on your teacher or leader certification exam. So thanks for tuning in for step number two. If you didn't catch step number one, make sure you go back and watch that one first because these are all running together. So step number two is knowledge. So the million dollar question of the day is, you ready for this? Drum roll. Have you ever played a game in your life? Like a, I'm talking like a board game, right? Or whatever, video game, whatever you wanna use. Have you ever played a game in your life without learning or educating yourself on the rules in order to play it. Now, I know that sounds silly. You're like, well, duh, sir. Like, well, I, how can I play something if I don't know the rules? Now, I know there are a couple people that make up rules as we go along. When we were in elementary school, I get that, right? But for our conversation here, obviously, we're on the same page. We know, want to know the rules of the game before we play. Because if we don't know the rules, we're going to fail at the game and get frustrated. Well, guess what? Remember what I talked about in step number one. This exam is a performance. It's you against a state, it's you against a testing center, it's you against the Department of Education. You have to think of it that way. I talked about that step in number one, but these all run together. In order to perform and excel and pass your exam, you have to know the rules of the game. Now, what the heck does that mean? I've been working with thousands of teachers every single year here at the Learning Liaisons with our team members on a variety of exams, Florida teacher certificate exams, now practice exams, and more to come. And I have done hundreds of face-to-face -face workshops each year. We have our courses online, people calling, Facebook groups, whatnot. And I can tell you with certainty that 90 to 95% of teachers and college students, just like you watching this video right now, do not know the basic questions that I ask them about their exam. So what do I mean by that? Like if you're taking, I don't know, practice core math, right, 5733, if you're taking that right now, can you tell me the names of the different competencies that they test you on? Can you tell me the content that they ask you? Can you tell me how many questions are on the exam? Can you tell me how long you have? Can you tell me the rules when you go to the testing center? More importantly, can you tell me how many questions you need to get right to pass your exam? For my Florida peeps, let's say you're taking general knowledge math, let's say GK math or professional ed, whatever, GK math. Can you tell me how many questions that just recently changed from 45 to 40? Can you tell me the four competencies? Can you tell me what skills? Can you tell me how many questions you need to get right? Can you tell me what tools did I give you? A calculator, all these different things that most teachers, when I see them face to face in our workshops or online, they don't know the answers to it. And you probably don't either. Now don't take this wrong. There's a small percentage of people that go out there and the first thing they do is learn about the exam. But knowledge is power. Step number two, as I mentioned, is knowledge. If you don't know the rules of the game, i.e. your exam, you most likely will take it numerous times. Because whatever exam it is, the first attempt pass rates, I don't care what exam it is, they run, depend depending on the exam, between 55 to low 70%. First attempt success rates. And a lot of that has to do We'll talk about it in a lot of these steps here is the resources you're using, but more importantly, not knowing anything about the exam. So one of the biggest pushbacks that I've gotten over the years is that teachers think that, and remember, myself and our team members have been through these exams ourselves. I know your struggles, I've been there myself. That's why I do what I do here at the Learning Liaisons. But most teachers that I encounter, a lot of people say the same thing. It, it sounds something like this. These exams are a sham. Pearson or ETS are trying to take my money. They don't tell us what's on the exam and the study guides and materials we buy look nothing like the real test. This is a ridiculous. This is a bunch of shenanigans. Yes, I just said shenanigans. Laugh if you want. I love that word. But people think that because they don't know that ETS, when I say ETS, that's for our practice peeps, 
or Pearson for our FTC peeps, they don't realize that they put out a very extensive, they call it a blueprint. And they literally tell you how many types of questions go with each skill. And more important, they list all the content that you're gonna see on the exam. Now, some of the content lists, you might have to do some research to find out what they're talking about, but a lot of them blatantly list everything that you're gonna to expect to see on your exam. That should always be your first step before you do anything. If I find out, hey, I gotta take the Praxis, I gotta take the Praxis Core, the writing, math, well, let me go on ETS first, and I'm gonna download all of the skill blueprints and I'm gonna start taking an hour, an hour and sitting there and taking notes on everything, writing everything down, making content lists, and then use that on your next step. And we'll talk about that as we go through these steps. But you need to learn the beast that you're attacking, that you're getting in the ring with. This is a performance. Remember I talked about in step one, athlete on the field, a singer or a musician on the stage, a teacher in the classroom. You as a teacher, do you have to know the rules of the game before you engage with your students? What do you think that means when we put that in, in, into real terms? Having the strategies you need to success? Not necessarily, that's different. Knowing the benchmarks and standards that you're hired to teach, that is, that is the knowledge part. Deadlines, knowing the dates, knowing when your exams have to take place, knowing what grades your kids have to get. All of those things is now, you know that as an educator. Why not on this test? I know you're probably kicking yourself or you're thinking, how dare this guy? He sounds like he's mean. I'm not mean. My job is to help you, right? I want to force you to do what needs to be done for first attempt success. That is our goal here. And we do a pretty good job here at the Learning Liaisons helping teachers find that success. And a lot of people come to us failing before, but we put them on the right track and they pass. Feel free to check our reviews on Google and Facebook. We're here to help you. But the goal of these seven steps is I'm gonna take you on a journey from one to seven to put you in the best possible position to pass. So we talked about performance in step one, knowledge. Know the person that you're going in the ring with, i.e. the exam. If you're taking the professional ed test for the state of Florida, you, if I get on the phone with you, you should be able to rattle off to me the eight competencies. You should be able to tell me what kind of content circulates in those competencies, how many questions there are, what's the percent out of 100 I need to pass, how many questions does that equate to, what's my magic number? These are all legitimate, easy questions that every single teacher should be answering about their exam before they even start studying, before you even start studying. So when someone comes to us here at the Learning Liaisons, they call us and they say, you know, I have problems, I can't pass my Praxis Core Math or my Core Reading or my GK math or subject area K through six, whatever it is, we have a series of questions that I, I like to talk to these people. And the series of questions I ask is, obviously one, I ask them what they're using to study, right? But more importantly is, I ask them, do you know how many questions you need to get right to pass? And most people just, there's just silence. Or if I'm sitting in front of them, just go, look at me like that, right? If I ask you right now, how many questions do you know you need to get right to pass on your exam? Can you tell me that with 100% certainty? Not a guess. This is not a guessing game. This is your livelihood. So whether you're a college student who has to pass your exam to get into and graduate from your program, or you're a classroom teacher who has to pass these exams to get a job, keep your job, this is your livelihood. So you need to take onus of this, educate yourself because you can. You're a very smart person. I know you can do it. There's no reason why. We got people come to us all day long that fail this exam five to 10 times, whatever exam it is that you're taking, they come to us, fail it three, five, seven times, and then we help them and they pass. Now we're not miracle workers, but it's all about doing things the right way. So we talked about performance in step one. Step two, we talked just now about knowledge. Know the rules of the game before you engage. So I have a challenge to you before we wrap this step number two up. All right, here's my challenge, very simple. You're watching this video right now, you've made it this far, congratulations, right? You definitely show me that your dedication to the profession of education is real. So my challenge to you right now is go ahead in the comment box right below. I want you to write one comment for me. And in the comment, I want you to do two things. So I want you to write down what test you're prepping for right now. And then I want you to write in the same sentence how many times you've taken it. So let's say, Praxis Core Writing, 
three times or, or general knowledge chest, never taken it before. So I'll challenge you, put in the comment box what test you're taking and how many times you've attempted so far. So once again, my name is Dr. Ray. I'm the CEO and founder of Learning Liaisons. We're here to clear up the confusion, give you what you need for first attempt success. So please go ahead and like, share, and comment on this video. Share it among your education circles. We're here to help you. We're all in this together. I'm no special than you. I struggle with tests. This is why I do what I do today, to see how many people I can help in a year pass their certification exam. And right now, in July 2020, we recently just passed a 7,000 teacher mark since doing this since 2014. And most of those have been in the same last couple of years since we really ramped up operation here at the Learning Liaison. So with that being said, always remember, it's when you pass, not if you pass your certification exams. These tests are 80% mental, 20% content. I will catch you in step number three. We're gonna take a closer look at that blueprint. You know the blueprints I was talking about before? In the next video, in step number three, we're gonna take a closer look at a couple of the blueprints. And I'm gonna teach you what you need to be doing for that first step towards success, which is understanding the knowledge part of passing your exam. So Dr. A here signing off. Have a great rest of your day. Have an amazing weekend. Have a superb week and an even better weekend. And we'll catch you in the next video. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.